All right, hey everyone. Uh, welcome to the US Chess School. Uh, I'm teaching, uh, <laughs> this one is supposed to be uh, Romain Edouard, but he had to uh, cancel at the last second. So uh, I'm in, I, actually I was gonna do one anyway, so it, it all kind of works out. Uh, I'm live with the, the class here. They're already thinking about um, the, the position at hand. And of course I'm, I'm talking to Twitch now and you guys can, can think about what you would do here as well. Uh, but the lecture series that um, we've been doing for um, the past um, couple months is that uh, we've been talking about learning from losses, uh, where coaches have been asked to uh, share some of their games and uh, discuss uh, some of their most kind of like painful losses, I would say, some of their most instructive losses. And I think we were supposed to talk about how we grew from them as well. Although for the most part, everyone's just been showing their losses <laughs> and no, no growth. Um, so this first position here uh, is this game I had against uh, Seth Homa. And this was at a tournament in 2016 when I was uh, chasing my final IM norm. Uh, and so I had two norms already. I'd already crossed like the 2400 rating at some point. Um, and uh, I just needed one more norm to get the title. Uh, so this game was a pretty important game. I was doing okay in this tournament. I think I needed, I don't know, like probably three out of four or something uh, to get the norm. But it was very important that I win this game with, with white. Uh, and as you guys might imagine, I have like a pretty... A pretty big decision here uh, to make in terms of what to play. Um, but let me give you guys some time to think about it. And if you have some ideas here, then uh, of course message them to me privately, not to the whole group. Uh, and if you want to get called on, make sure to use an exclam in your answer. Hey Twitch, so okay, I'm muted in, in Zoom. Um, for the most part, I'm gonna be focusing on the class, so I won't be uh, reading chat that often unless they're like thinking about a position like right now. Um, but yeah, you guys enjoy <laughs> enjoy the lecture. I'll try to check in uh, when I can, but um, what I usually do is I, I look at their answers and I try to give them some feedback because sometimes they might submit something that's like completely off base or completely wrong and um, that's uh that's totally fine and then i like to give them some some feedback so far a lot of suggestions for uh bishop takes h6 so the sacrifice is of course uh very apparent and that's that's the main thing that i was considering here absolutely so let's see Okay, so far we have like a few suggestions for uh, bishop takes h6, and this was definitely the main move that I was kind of considering in, in this position, um, because at first glance it, I mean, looks very, very promising. Um, but on the other hand, I also felt like my position here is pretty good. I mean, material's equal, but we've got the two bishops. Uh, I can play bishop f4 if I want and just kind of improve this bishop for free. The knight on c4 is a little bit loose. Pawn on c5, you know, might be good. I have this d6 square. I have this, like, weakness I can attack on b5. So white's position felt, like, kind of nice to me. But, of course, I was very tempted to uh, take on h6 because if it works, then we just win the game. We don't, we don't have to do anything else. It's just going to be a winning attack. So if we can calculate this one and, and convince ourselves that it's working... Uh, then, uh, well, 
if I had done that, I, I would just go for it, win the game, and, and that would be that. But, I mean, it is a peace sacrifice. So, um, let me ask you guys, is anyone willing to defend this one? Meaning, you're ready, you would go for it. As I know a few people suggested it, you know, it's, it's easy to suggest a move when you think it's the answer, but it's another thing to actually take the risk and play it over the board. Okay, Radia says they would play it as white. Jonathan says also they would. Cool. Okay, well, let's go through some of the lines and we'll see what you guys would do there. Um, so, of course, I was calculating takes. Alex says he would also go for it. Nice. Takes. Queen takes h6. And uh, when I usually calculate something, I actually, what I start with is I give myself an extra move. I just kind of start with, well, what's, what is white's threat? Because if we want to figure out how black is going to try to defend that. We don't just want to end our calculation on queen takes h6. We kind of want to see, well, how is black going to defend? Okay, well, I felt like my threat is probably knight g5. And then that's, if black doesn't have a defense to this, then we're just, just mating. Uh, so my thinking was that probably black is going to play this move rook f e8. I think there were some suggestions for f6. f6 seems pretty easy to refute. We get a bunch of checks. We also get a perpetual if we want. e6 pawn will be hanging. Uh, that didn't seem so, so critical to me. I was mainly concerned about rook e8 with idea knight f8. So what should white do in that position after rook to e8? Okay, got one suggestion for knight g5. That was definitely a move, yeah, first move to consider. If knight g5, black will go knight f8. So I'm asking you guys to hold this in your visualization because during the game, you, you have to calculate everything before, you, <laughs> before you're able to, to make a choice. So knight g5, knight f8, and does white have anything there? Okay, got a suggestion for bishop takes b7, queen takes b7, knight to e4. Fair enough, threatening knight f6 check. You can also play bishop e4 instead of taking on b7, followed by rook e4. So a few of you guys are suggesting bishop, uh, bishop takes b7, queen takes b7, rook e4. Okay, presumably with the idea to go rook h4 and play for mate. Okay, makes sense. Oh, on knight e4, there might be knight h7. Okay, let's let's take a look at that line. So we're thinking about bishop takes h6, gh, queen takes h6, rook e8, knight g5, knight f8. Navan says if knight e4, there's going to be knight h7. Yeah, exactly right. That was kind of one of the things that was bothering me because in this position after knight g5, knight f8, it was a couple of years ago, but I remember like, I think my main candidate move was probably bishop e4 because that looked like the most um, straightforward. Then I thought, yeah, if takes, knight takes, knight h7, covers f6, covers g5. It wasn't so obvious to me what, what I'm doing there. So rook e4 is probably stronger. 
yeah, instead of taking with the knight. Rook takes e4 and then heading to h4. And I think I considered rook e4, but ultimately I just concluded, like, I don't know. <laughs> it looks, looks a bit slow. Uh, because if we imagine rook goes to h4, black plays knight g6. Uh, we're not necessarily winning there with the rook on, on e8. We have queen h7, check, king f8. And yeah, now it's starting to get a little deep, right? So now I'm like, oh, do I really, <laughs> do I really want to do this? Like give up a piece and then end up missing something. And I'm just down a piece for, for two pawns. And I had the two bishops. Um, Avon says knight g5 after knight g6. No, knight was already on g5, Avon. Knight was already on, on g5. Okay, so the other line I was considering here was uh, takes, takes, takes. Rook e8, knight g5, knight f8. And, um, well, simple bishop takes b7. Queen takes b7. Um, and then maybe some rook lift there. And it kind of, again, felt like uh, similar. Then I think a different variation I considered was to go uh, rook e4 in that critical position. So the critical position I'm talking about, guys, is after knight g5, knight f8, where white has like kind of uh, a wide choice. Um, so I also thought about rook e4, because I thought, oh, I can sacrifice my rook, and then if takes, I can get uh, my bishop to e4. And then I looked for mate there, but f5, yeah, I couldn't quite figure it out. Uh, I also looked at c6, actually considered uh, by Jonathan, suggested this one. Yeah, c6 was also a move that was on my mind, because in some cases the queen might be needed on the seventh rank, and if we can pull it off, then that might be good too. Uh, is the bishop f1, bishop d3 idea any good? Question from the chat. Uh, it might be a little bit slow. I, I didn't really consider it during uh, the game. Um, okay, so... Yeah, long story short, you know, I couldn't figure out the lines, and my evaluation of the sacrifice was that, like, probably it's working somehow, but I'm just, like, not totally sure exactly. Uh, so based on that, what would you guys do here? Would you take, or would you play it safe with bishop f4? And I want an answer from everybody, because you have to make a move. You can't just do nothing. <laughs> so you have to choose one of these two moves. Take on h6, or go bishop f4. Okay, so far, three votes for take, two votes for playing it safe. Oh, Alex says he would probably play it safe, but Alex, you were one of the earliest <laughs> students to say you would take on h6. Oh, can I do a poll? I will try. A zoom poll. Hmm, how do I do a poll? That didn't work. That's just slash poll. Yeah, it seems too tough. Um, okay, Avon, I'm gonna unmute you. Let's let's discuss. Yeah, I mean. Well, I, uh, well, I would just, I would actually like take take the pawn. I mean, because mm -hmm. it, I mean, if we play it safe, we might win. But yeah, and then I, I, I'd, yeah, I play queen queen h six, and then after rookie a, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'd, I'd probably play um knight g five here um, as usual, and then knight f eight, and here I guess I would just play like. Um, bishop b takes b7, mm -hmm. and um, and then uh, rook, rook e4, and I guess um, after I mean, what were you saying, like knight, 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 knight g8, I think. Yeah, here we were a little bit unsure because, um, well, if we just give the move to white, rook h4, then black goes knight g6 against that, so black kind of has like a yeah, and I was like thinking. Mm -hmm. Play like knight, um, knight, knight, 
each seven after that, three knight knight f six or uh Oh I see. So yeah, right. If knight g six at some point then knight h seven is uh quite a possibility. Then I guess maybe queen e seven would be played or something. Right, let's say queen e seven and then yeah, if rook h four, knight g six. Yeah, so um I guess I don't know, maybe I could I should do knight h seven first possibly or after rook h4 but i mean well knight h7 I, first i think they take rook h4 and f6 they'll have yeah take yeah probably so probably just rook h4 first and mm -hmm. uh and um knight g6 um and here I'd play um, knight, knight, knight e4, maybe, because uh, um, I don't want to block my queen, so just knight, knight e4, and then, uh, I mean, he could, uh, like, make a waiting move, and then, then I would play, like, mm, I, I think maybe, like, rook, rook, rook f4 or rook g4. Okay, try to follow up. Oh yeah, simple correction. Sorry, you guys are, are totally right. In this line, on uh, knight h7, takes, there was rook g4 check. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there is rook g4 check here, so... Maybe knight h7 is possible, knight g6, and then we would have to find a move here. And now, now rook f4, maybe. So, right. rook f4 seems to be good. Right, rook f4 might just be fantastic. So it takes, we have check. We win and the queen. Knight, knight, 92 check. Sure, 92. And, uh, I mean, black has a lot of pieces, but the king is super weak. We have a bunch of pawns. And one of these knights is going to get caught very quickly. Well, like, maybe you can even play, like, king g2, h4, and then rook h1. Like, something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could try knight d5 as well, but... My feeling is like in this kind of position, okay, we always have like check, so we're pretty safe, but um H four here probably like H four maybe. Yeah, it can be really tough with like the multiple like the C pawn, the H pawn, and uh and so on. Yeah, so I I think this is probably like winning, so Yeah, because he yeah. has no queen. Really yeah, it should be. Um, there's also possible to go uh, like a rook g4 in this position. Then again, it would be met with like knight g6. And we have some similar lines. But okay, thank you, Yvonne. Nice job. Um, so yeah, it looked like actually it was kind of uh, it was split. I think there were more yeses they would take than uh, than playing it safe. But actually, there's yeah, quite a few people wanted to play it safe as well. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you guys what happened. I did play it safe. I went bishop f4 because I was like, you know, I've sacrificed before and it didn't work out. And like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I should just be playing solid. I have a good position. And I ended up not doing it. Uh, but yeah, definitely I, I regretted that because I, I ended up losing the game. And often what happens like when you miss your chance, you know, for like a big sacrifice or taking some big risk a lot of times you just kind of start sliding down and you never get another chance like that again uh and and so i ended up losing this one just kind of getting like slowly uh outplayed um and of course when i analyzed the position you know later on this was the first first thing i checked when i got home like oh man was this was this winning for me and uh of course it was of course <laughs> Of course it was winning. And and the engine shows, you know, like three or four different ways. Um, like after knight g5, knight f8, pretty much all the moves we were discussing here were were winning uh in, in some fashion. Uh, like the line we looked at with, with Avon was was pretty good. Um there were uh, other options as well. Let me just uh check my notes here because it's uh been a while. So I give you a hundred plan inch. Um, so, 
yeah, for example, the c6 move was also good because it like it does pull the queen away from the seventh rank, and then after like rook e4, we get all these lines um up a tempo. But like for example, black goes queen b7 to get the queen defending the, the seventh rank, rook h4, knight g6, knight e4, queen e7. And uh yeah, rook f4 uh is good here. We can also throw in this check first and then go rook f4 so that the knight really just can't take uh because of queen h8 mate. Uh, and otherwise uh we're threatening knight on g6 so this is just uh totally over uh also good uh, as stockfish pointed out um was bishop e4 and i think originally i rejected this move because i think i didn't exactly see what i can do on f5 but uh what we just take we take on e6 and it's just too many pawns. So black's position is, is collapsing. I don't remember if I just like missed this or or what happened, but this would have been uh, a super easy win uh, here. Um, also good apparently was like takes, takes, rook a1, you know, plus five. <laughs> so basically when it's plus five, it just means like, you know, you like the attack is essentially unstoppable. Like there's nothing black can do to fix their position. The king is just way too weak and they're not getting enough uh, counterplay in time. Uh, and then finally, yeah, this move rookie four, which I was proud of to see during the game. This was also uh, winning with the detail that after takes, uh, we take with the knight. Knight h7, this is what I kind of was concerned about during the game. Uh, let me pause here and ask you guys, how does white win uh, from this point? Okay, got one suggestion for A takes B5 so far. Uh, someone says knight G5. Or knight F6. <laughs> I'm not sure which one they want. How far do you have to calculate to play bishop takes H6? Well, that's that's a good question. And that's always the key question, um, Chesterfish. Uh I, I think you should calculate until either you see a clear win, right? That would be great. Or you see a position where you have like a number of good options where you feel like, okay, once I get here, then I'll decide what to do, but it looks very promising. So if it looks promising, I don't think you have to see 100% how you're going to win. I just think you have to take the plunge at some point and, and take the risk. Okay, another suggestion for A takes B5. White says knight g5 wins an exchange. Okay, yeah, I got a few options for uh, a takes b5, but then what do you guys want after a b? Because of course we can throw this one in, but specifically, what? How do we want to follow up after that? Mm -hmm. Rook takes a8. Rook takes a8. Knight f6 check. And then I guess the idea is knight takes f6, we take on a8. And, uh, oh, or we can take, take, and go knight f6 first. Right. Takes and then take there. I mean, in either case, we are still down a piece, but we are getting uh, a lot of pawns. Um, even stronger, a few of you guys pointed out, knight g5. Yeah, because we hit h7, and we hit the rook. I think this is what I missed during the game. I just didn't realize that, oh, taking, we're taking on g5 with check, and then we're taking on a8, and then at the end, we're also taking on b5. So we're left with um, at least three pawns for the knight, but again, super weak king. 
and the super strong H pawn. So Y has huge advantage here. Engine, uh, I think, just is winning. Uh, okay, so yeah, long story short, I was like pretty uh, disappointed. Oh, also, I, I should say in this case, uh, knight g5 wasn't even the only move. Knight h4, uh, with the idea of bringing the knight to g2, f4, and then h5, uh, was also crushing. This one was kind of tough. I, I don't remember if I really considered it that seriously during the game, but just interesting that white has all the time in the world to to play such a very slow plan, like knight g2, knight f4, knight h5, but once the knight gets to h5, it's just very difficult for, for black to uh, defend. And then it really starts to look like this knight on c4, although it looks like a good piece, actually is just like totally, totally cut from the game. And so black's extra piece doesn't really have a lot of value here. Uh, and so yeah, this one is like plus six, plus seven uh, with this plan, and right, white is, white is crushing. Um, yeah, let's save queen d5. Um, let's try knight f4. And then if, um, well, if queen f5, I think, oh, queen takes d4. Right, let's just play um, rook a e1. Queen g7, fair enough. Um, maybe we can try queen h3. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't have the board, you can... Oh, whoops, I just sent it to Wyatt. <laughs> you can uh, see it here. Queen g5. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here, to be honest. Maybe, um, maybe white has misplayed it, though. I would, I would still like, um, <laughs> I still like white's, uh, white's chances here. But let's go back. Maybe we have something, uh, better after queen d5. You can also consider maybe just defending the pawn with, um, rook to d1. Yeah, maybe this one. And then we just want to go here uh, next. Yeah, like queen f5. We'll go knight f4. Queen h7. We'll give this check. It's queen g7. Yeah, kind of similar to uh, to before. Right. And I, I understand it kind of feels slow, but uh, yeah, well, like during the game, you know, I, I just didn't really appreciate White's initiative um, either. Though to be fair, Knight F4 or Knight H4, like, yeah, it was was wasn't on my mind that much, just just briefly. But I felt like, now nah, how could Knight G5 not be the move? <laughs> like, how could it not be Knight G5? But I guess the the lesson, the whole the point that I learned was like, you know, the attack was winning. There was a lot of ways to finish it off. Uh, I just couldn't calculate it at all from from afar and like, didn't have. Uh, Confident. So it taught me two things, I guess. Number one, I got to work on my calculation because this is ridiculous. I mean, it was like a winning line. We just had to like, just try to see it a little bit more and, and we would have gotten it. But number two, you definitely need to have confidence. Yeah, because like you're rarely going to be 100% sure. Like, okay, sometimes someone blunders a piece and you can see that it's hanging and you just take it and game over. It's You don't need a lot of confidence for that. But for a lot of these lines, it, it, they can feel unclear, but deep down you kind of think like, you know, I've seen positions like this before, I've seen sacrifices like this before, I know what a weak king looks like, I know there's going to be something, 
And odds are, if you take the risk and you go towards that position, even without having calculated everything out, well, once you get there, you're more likely to find the right answer, much more likely, right? Because you can actually see the position in front of you. So too many players, uh, and myself included, obviously this is why I'm showing the game, um, like, you know, want some kind of guarantee, right? That, you know, if you sacrifice, it looks good, but you know, you're not sure what if you end up down the piece. But yeah, in many cases, it's like, you know, either this is the only way to win or it's by far the strongest approach to the position. I mean, if you're an E4 player, if you're an attacking player, in many cases, you know, you, you do have to take the risk and, and go on the attack. Okay, Crystal's asking, well, what if you go to the position and in the end you lose because you went for it? Well, I've done that. I've definitely, <laughs> definitely done that. Um, but the bigger picture is that long term, you get better at evaluating difficult and dynamic positions. So you might be wrong some of the times. You might think you have a strong attack and then you get there and then your opponent just plays some crazy move F6 and turns out they held everything and, and you feel silly you know why did i give up a piece but but then you'll just learn from that experience you'll learn like well i guess i didn't have enough attacking potential in this position and that'll help you for future positions when you're evaluating future attacking positions um because you're always going to have you know you can play the safest openings out there like the london system but you will always have opportunities to take a risk your opponents will often be giving you chances and if you feel like it's probably good chances are you're underestimating it right like uh you know you can kind of try to work <laughs> against yourself a little bit like if you know that you're going to be generally pessimistic then you should kind of keep that in mind and, and realize that like you know you might not see it right now but once you get to the position it'll clearly be a lot um uh, more visible and stronger what if is what if it's the last round and you are top seated <laughs> well, we need more info. We can be the top seed, but are we leading the, the tournament? It sounds like the question is, what if what if it's the last round and you're leading the tournament and like a draw is uh, a safe result? Okay, that's that's a really interesting question. Yeah, if you just need a draw to win the tournament or to like get your norm, um, then definitely go for the sacrifice because you'll always have perpetual here, right? <laughs> you can just make your draw and, and game over. So, yeah. Okay. Well, so this was obviously a very painful uh, loss <laughs> because we, um, you know, had this chance to win and then it, it ended up not working out. Um, a few months later, I got another chance to to play against um, Seth in, a, in an I Am Norm event. It was actually the same. <laughs> it, was, it was the same tournament just a couple months later at the St. Louis Chess Club. And I'll just play through uh, some of the moves here. Uh, in the opening. So we have a QGA here. He goes knight c6, knight f3, bishop g4, bishop e3. And it's a QGA, but it kind of transposes into the Shigorin. Uh, take on c4, bishop b4. I play queen d3 here, black takes on f3, gf3, and castles. Okay, this was maybe the first moment where I felt like I had to um, think about things a bit. So let me give you guys a chance here to take a look at the position, and I'd be curious to see what you guys would play at this point as white.
<laughs> yeah, I saw Jesse watching me watching Sam <laughs> teach the U.S. chess school. That was that was pretty funny. Okay, we have suggestions for castles: Rook G1, A3, E5, Queenside castling. Rook G1, A3, Queenside castling. Just going to read out all the suggestions. E5 again. Uh, okay, guys. So, yeah, a couple different moves suggested here. Um, I had uh, A3, castles queenside, rook g1, castles kingside, as well as e5. Uh, yeah, so a lot of moves in this position already. Someone mentioned this as theory. Uh, like during the game, I honestly didn't know it. I think queen d3 was kind of the last move I was aware of. And then my understanding of this position was that like, well, white has a good center, you know, two bishops, we can pawn structure. It's kind of interesting and, and playable. Um, but I was basically on on my own here and, and having to to think for for myself um yeah i uh definitely was strongly thinking about like rook g1 here um and just going for like a queen side castles setup because it just looks like we can we can attack it's not about castling king side and putting the king on h1 um and i thought that might be possible uh as well um, I don't know if there was a right answer here. I, I just wanted to see what, what you guys would do. But what I ended up playing was a3 because my feeling was that like this is actually kind of a nice and flexible move here. And uh, black has a big choice. You know, they have to either trade or choose a diagonal. And if they go back to a5, which feels like maybe the most natural, then this bishop cannot go back to like d6 or e7 at any point, um, which... I thought it was actually kind of an achievement if I'm going to attack on the king side, right? So that the bishop cannot defend the, the dark squares. And if he decides to take on c3, well then, again, we have a choice. Maybe I would take with the pawn to strengthen the center. And here, maybe I'm more likely to castle king side and actually just play this one uh, more strategically. Just have a big center, go rook a b1, a4, two bishops, king h1, rook g1, and things just look very, very pleasant for white. But basically, I didn't want to decide uh, until he he made his decision uh, so he goes bishop a5 uh, rook g1 knight h5 uh, typical shigorin move uh, and you see this one in the grunfeld as well actually where black just tries to play against uh, the dark squares so now the idea is to go queen h4 for example and then try to plant a knight on f4 maybe play g6. It, I mean, it feels like white should be doing well here, but it, it actually is kind of a, kind of an annoying idea if black is able to get all this in. Uh, so what do you think white should do here? Okay, I see rook g5, rook g4. Bishop g5, also possible. Though bishop g5, we want to be mindful of the d4 pawn. Crystal says rook g5. Aradia says king e2, rook g2, rook g1 might be an idea, but probably bad. Yeah, that's how I would evaluate it too. Like you could play this, but one day we might regret putting the king on e2. b4 I thought is possible, but actually kind of helps black's bishop go to b6 and then put pressure on our d4 pawn, which is kind of our main weakness here. And it would also make things a little bit worse for us if we if we castle queenside. Uh, okay, so I played rook g5. To me, this felt like a really nice 
uh, multi-purpose move. I stop queen h4. I prepare to eventually double up, or like the rook, second rook wants to come to g1. And we get a tempo against black's pieces like knight on h5 and maybe even bishop on a5 uh, could hang one day. Who knows? Now I'm definitely considering like d5 ideas. Uh, so g6. I castled. Uh, bishop b6. Okay, white to play. I guess we're just going to do like a little bit of solitaire chess as we go through this game. Uh, what would you guys do here? John says Rick takes h5. I love it. Just brutal. I did consider it. I absolutely did. Probably on every move <laughs> that the pawn was on g6, <laughs> I considered Rick takes h5. Uh, Rook g1 is possible. For sure. Threatening Rook takes h5. On Rook g1, Black probably goes knight g7. And then we would have to do something about our d4 pawn. So we want to be a little careful there. Um, and then we have suggestions for both d5 and e5, which are also moves, absolutely. With d5, I think I basically expected bishop takes e3 check. You have to take with the queen. And uh, that position looked very good for me. Um, because the rook is opening up on the d-file. And probably black has to take. And then we can take like in a number of different ways, but they all kind of look nice for white. So d5 was certainly a, a big a big consideration for me. Uh, and I felt like white, white was much better there. Um, f4 is certainly possible. Um, I, I can't say how much time I, I spent on it, but... I think it definitely feels like a, a reasonable idea here also, just trying to like play for f5. And as long as our center is under control, then we have time for, for plans like this. Uh, okay, so I actually ended up going for e5. And uh, yeah, I kind of learned like my lesson from the last game, or at least I, I was hoping that, that I did. My feeling was like, okay, I'm attacking now. Uh, we're in attacking mode. I should also say this game um, was, I think, the one of the later rounds again in an I Am Norm tournament. I still needed my final norm, and uh, I think I needed to actually win out. I think I needed to win this game and then the last game to get the norm. Yeah, I think this was the penultimate game. Uh, and I had already won uh, the previous game, round seven, which I also needed to win. So I needed to win like my last three games to get the norm. And I won the first one. This was now game two that I needed to win, and then I would have to win with black uh, if I wanted the norm. Um, so now at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm attacking. If I need to sacrifice, I'm going to sacrifice. And whatever confidence we need to, to go for it, like, because a lot of times it's not just the sacrifice that you need a little bit of, of spirit for. You also have to be willing to play with like a bad structure at times. So E5, I mean, strategically... It's a big concession. It gives up a lot of squares, but at the same time, we also open up uh, the knight to come to e4, and I felt like this was a very, very strong attacking idea because once the knight gets to e4, now we absolutely have rook takes h5 and, and knight f6 ideas. Uh, so black played knight e7. And uh, to me, this felt like uh, a very logical move. I was actually expecting black to go knight g7, uh, and then the plan was to go knight e4, knight f5, bring the knight to f6, king g7, uh, and then I think I had this one in mind. Rook takes f5, yeah, e f5, uh, and then queen f1. 
and just bringing the queen over to the king side. Nine on f6 is really powerful, uh, and black's king is basically getting mated. Whenever they go h5, they have to deal with knight h5, rook g1, and, and so on. Um, so I was already ready to just like sacrifice an exchange like this, and I was kind of uh, definitely feeling feeling up for it. Uh, but instead, black goes knight e7. Okay, white to play. What would you guys do? Crystal says, Rook takes h5. I don't know. Okay, we got Rook g1. Ninety four. Ninety four is logical. Yeah, I'm going to give the students maybe a few minutes here to think. Yeah, a lot of suggestions for knight e4. Definitely a, probably most logical move in the position because, well, that was their idea with e5, right? To bring the knight to e4. Okay, let's call on uh, Evan with the exclam. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh, you don't like your answer? No, I don't want to talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> uh, let's... <laughs> let's talk to uh, Avon. Alright, I might meet myself randomly because I'm not really sure if I want to talk, but... Um, anyways, I played Rook takes H5, G takes H5. Rook g1, and then after, um, I guess after knight g6, because if king h8, I was thinking bg5, and that just wins. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, unstoppable. And if, like, uh, and he can't even go knight g8 because then I pinned. So, knight g6 is, like, kind of forced. Mm -hmm. And then after knight g6, I was thinking of playing bishop takes e6, and Got then it. rook. But then we only have perpetual, so I'm not really sure. Right, but your idea, right, was to take here, and then seems like because we don't have a third rook, unfortunately, to go to the G file. Uh, but okay, definitely you're not committed to. Yeah, I mean, I, I I just hope that a draw is like enough for you to get like that. I last I am. Moment. No, you didn't hear me. I need I need to win. Oh, you need to win. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, it's it's certainly uh it's certainly a good try. Uh, nice job. Let me call on uh Daniel. Okay, so I think we should take on h five and then probably go bishop g five to eliminate any knight g six, knight f five somehow, and the piece is defending. And then next move we're going either rook g one or bishop f six, queen e three, queen h six, and it seems like the game's over. Probably just queen e three next move and yeah that's it. Okay, yeah, no, very good actually. So right, my my thought process here what as as follows. I mean my first thought was like okay let's just play knight e4 because that's that's what I said I was gonna do. Um but then I realized you know well if I don't take now then he's gonna go knight g7 and it's probably still good for white but like I could just take now and then go knight e4 for example uh and and play against the, the structure, and that looks very, very dangerous. But then I realized, well, okay, knight on f6 is good, but what's even better is a bishop on f6. Like, that would just, that would just be killing. So, 
yeah, we came up with the idea to to take and go bishop g5. Uh, and again, I had this thought like, well, should I sack? I could just play knight e4. And I was like, no, <laughs> sack, <laughs> sack immediately. You like, if you don't do it now, yeah, you don't get your chance. But the point that Daniel mentioned is very important that we stop black from being able to play immediate knight g6. This makes their defense very difficult. They got to get out of this pin. But also, if we imagine the bishop on f6, then we have two threats in with this kind of position, right? The first one is to just give a check on the g-file, and that's going to be mate or mating. Black would have to block with the knight on g6. Let's say they even have time to unpin, they would have to block. Uh, but the second threat is to bring the queen to h6. And if black wants to defend against this one, well, the knight would have to go to f5 to cover g7. So black can defend against one of these ideas, but not really both. Uh, and so once we kind of conceptualized this, then it became very easy to believe that white is just totally winning here. Um, so yeah, now black, I mean, is just just lost. He, I mean, he tried queen d7. You know what to do, bishop f6, uh, rook fd8, queen e3, and black played uh, queen e8 here. Uh, okay, guys, so now it's like forced mate, so <laughs> white to play and win. Why don't you guys find the final final combo? More than one move, please. You know, rook g1 check, of course, black is going to go knight g6. Okay, yeah, they already found it. It's like, <laughs> like rook g1, queen h6, and yeah, third move is probably, probably the key. These kids are really fast. Oh, Twitch chat also found it. Nice. Nice job, Twitch chat. I am letting them talk. They don't want to. <laughs> they're like, they're like, I don't want to talk. Okay, guys, you found the right line. So nice job. Rook G1. Or you could start with Queen H6 either way. Uh, knight g6, queen h6, queen f8, and yeah, hopefully you saw the next move before you, you play all this, because otherwise, you know, you're kind of losing a tempo, and actually, yeah, if we don't just win here, I mean, black is going to be taking on d4, and, and things could get super, super messy, so very important that we see rook takes g6. If hg, we have queen h8, and if fg, we take... And uh, my opponent was actually very, very sportsmanlike. I was super appreciative. Uh, he let me put the mate on the board, and that was uh, that was really nice. I really appreciated that a lot. And you know, if you guys are getting checkmated in a nice way, don't resign. You know, like play it out. Let your opponents play. Everyone likes a good checkmate. You know, and as you get stronger, you don't really get the opportunity to play mate that often. Because people like resign because they're down a piece or exchange or, you know. Um, Whatever, but it was good to finish on on a nice on a nice mate. And then yeah, I actually did did win the next game to get the norm. So this game was incredibly crucial to to actually get the the final norm. And had we not been willing to like go for the attack and be willing to sacrifice, you know, like okay, things would have turned out very um very differently. The last game was crazy. I didn't I didn't deserve to win that game at all. I mean, it was just super lucky. But that's what happens, you know. 
you got to put yourself in a position to be lucky and then maybe maybe you get lucky sometimes um so hopefully what we learned uh, was clear i mean if if you feel optimistic about a position even if you don't calculate everything 100 percent all the way through if you feel like it's promising it's usually worth to to take the plunge take the risk and try to well try to go with your gut feeling you know uh think about all the times you've analyzed with the engine and it shows you all these wins and you know like <laughs> think is this one of these positions where you know, i'm going to check the engine later and it's going to show me like so many ways that we could have uh could have been winning so hopefully that helps you guys make make some better decisions for for the future um well okay guys i think we are gonna wrap it up here if you have any final questions feel free to to use the chat. I'm impressed. You guys, you guys managed to, to get through the whole class. We didn't have to close the Zoom chat. <laughs> Usually it's like five minutes in and we're already struggling <laughs> to keep everyone on track. All right, guys. Well, have a good one. I'll close out. Um, we're going to have a couple more classes uh, next week uh, as well. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys all. Catch you guys all later.